Brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created us for two sole purposes. Two, nothing more and nothing less. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you to know Him and to worship Him and Him alone. This is your purpose on earth. Wallahi, I make custom by Allah azza wa jal. You were not created to buy houses, build cars, and buy this, and sell that, and go fishing, and go here, and go there. None of this pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You were created to worship Him and Him alone. This is your role in this world, to establish deen in your life. And what deen? What deen do I have to establish? The deen of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Step into a magical night where powerful verses invite us to think about some important messages, especially on this night. One of the most impactful verses is when Allah directly addresses each one of us, saying, O oh people, what made you forget about Allah? Why are you not paying attention? Allah is asking why we can't realize that the most honorable thing we can do is worship Him. How can we not see that having a relationship with Him is the most noble and spiritually uplifting thing? What could be more beneficial than recognizing our Lord and connecting with Him? The world seems to deceive and cheat us, making us blind to this obvious reality. Our eyes are clouded and our hearts are closed to the fact that Allah gave us everything, including our amazing bodies, which He created perfectly. Yet we don't acknowledge, understand, or appreciate this. It's like we are fooled and misled, not doing what Allah wants us to do even though the signs are everywhere. Every aspect of creation points to a higher purpose, but something deludes us. As the verses dance in the moonlit sky, let their mesmerizing rhythm awaken your soul. The Quran explains that there are many things that delude us, and one of the primary causes is our attachment to worldly desires. In several verses, Allah criticizes the hypocrites and pagans for being deceived and misled by the attractions of this world. Furthermore, Allah says in Surah Qasas, verse number 50, فَإِن لَّمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنِ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًى مِّنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ But if they do not respond to you, then know that they only follow their own desires. And who is more astray than one who follows his desire without guidance from Allah? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing of people. 2850 is. It's a challenging reality because the pleasures and beauties of this world can be so enticing. We get caught up in enjoying our lives, wealth, and family. And sometimes we forget that all of this is temporary. We might feel like this world will last forever, but Allah continually reminds us that it's not the case. Allah says in Surah Fatir, verse number 5. <laughs> O mankind, indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. So let not the worldly life delude you and be not deceived about Allah by the deceiver. 3505. The Quran compares this world to rain that brings forth vegetation, but when the rain stops, the growth also ends. So let us reflect on these truths and be conscious of the deception that this world and shaitan can bring. Instead, Focus on what truly matters in the sight of Allah and seek a higher purpose beyond the temporary attractions of this world. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, reminded us that death should be a wake-up call for all of us. If nothing else can make us think, death certainly should. None of us will live forever and we will all return to Allah. Our time on earth is limited and each day is unique and will never come back again. One fascinating thing is that despite this diversity of 20 billion people, no two individuals are the same, and their potentials in this world are different. However, every single human being has the potential to earn paradise based on their circumstances and the choices they make in this life. 
The playing field is not entirely level in this world, as some are born into more advantageous situations than others. Allah has wisdom in this diversity. But when it comes to paradise, Allah has leveled the playing field. It doesn't matter where you were born, your family background, or the wealth you inherited. The potential to enter Jannah is equally accessible to every one of us. Isn't it incredible and amazing how Allah has given us the same potential for goodness and success? No one is deprived of the potential to enter paradise because of their circumstances in this world, and this is a great mercy from Allah. The blessing of being religious is that the pleasure of having a connection with Allah is more precious and satisfying than any other pleasure in this world. When you have that connection, the worldly pleasures lose their hold on you and you want to maintain that spiritual sweetness. When our hearts are connected to Allah and we practice piety, we feel alive and complete. Anas ibn Malik reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A time of patience will come to people when adhering to one's religion is like grasping a hot coal. In simpler terms, the hadith talks about a time when there will be a lot of chaos and trials, fitna, that might cause some Muslims to lose their faith. If we look at the history of Muslims from the time of the Prophet wasallam, in Mecca to the Crusades and the Mongol invasion, they also faced difficult situations but held on to their religion like holding hot coals. As we are moving closer to the Day of the Judgment, we will see that people will be so focused on worldly things that it becomes their main concern and the most important thing to them. They will chase after happiness and success in this world, and it will make them either happy or sad. This obsession with the material world causes them to neglect the afterlife, and they will prioritize building their lives here by ignoring the consequences in the next life. When they become too engrossed in the glitz and glamour of this temporary life, they mock and ridicule Islam and everything related to it, including the teachings of the Prophet Sunnah. To overcome such elements in one's life, we need to gain knowledge and strengthen our faith by turning to the Qur'an and Sunnah. The Prophet wasallam advised us to hold fast to these teachings, and no matter how tough it gets, we must never let go. Even if it feels like we are being burned, we should never abandon our faith. Our perseverance will be a legacy passed on to future generations, showing that we held on to our religion like holding hot coals. Subscribe and share our video if you want similar content in future.